Station. Uh, the breadwinner in my household is both my parents because they're both in the working class. Um, it's more of a relationship type of a thing, so the responsibility is shared between them in terms of who pays my fees and as well as who puts bread on the table, obviously. Um, I'm also staying with my sister who's also currently working, so she's able to also chip in where she can, you know. So, yeah, that's the current situation where I'm staying. Okay, so how do they actually travel? Um, they both commute using uh, their private transport. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister actually travels uh, using her car, but she uses the car train to get to work. So yeah, that's how they commute, private and as well as public mixed. Okay, so you say you were a filmmaker. What inspired you to be a filmmaker? What inspired me to be a filmmaker is the, I've always had a desire for change. Um, I've realized the amount of influence that films do have in terms of the society that um, they, in terms of the society that they find themselves in, as filmmakers, and we've seen how films have been used in the history in the past to um, inflict sort of uh, to formalize ideas, to create change, um, to liberate minds as well as emancipate minds um, from certain struggles, but. I think filmmaking is also for me an important part of storytelling. I would like to tell African stories and yeah, that's why I'd like to be a filmmaker. Alright. Um, when someone says breakers, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear that word? Someone who's making a living for their family, someone who's trying to put bread on the table, someone who's trying to hustle a job in this tough environment, um, tough economic climate that we find ourselves in in South Africa. And I think a worker is someone who really just wakes up every day with a purpose in mind and does what needs to be done to get the salary at the end of the month to be able to provide for their families. Mm. So do you think you're ready to work? Like, <laughs> Am I ready to become in, yeah, join in the, the working, working class? world? Yeah. Currently, to be honest, I would have to phrase it back to the education system in terms of how it has equipped me um, in terms of dealing with the real world, I don't think it has done that such as much um, because I don't know how tax works, I don't know how a bond works, I don't know like basic necessities that people have to go through, everyone needs to know how, how, how it works. Um, I don't think it has equipped me in that sense, but I do feel like in terms of being an independent person and being a South African and wanting to make a living for myself, I would be ready to go into the working class because I am a determined person and I am passionate about what I'm doing. Okay, um, when it, like, does that what you what what you're thinking? Mm -hmm. Does it also? Do you think it is the more or less the same mindset that other youth people have, or like, is it just specifically to someone like you who goes to a tertiary institution? That's that's a very tough question to answer in a broad sense because. We have a youth that's very much divided. Um, we're not as united as our predecessors were um, in terms of finding for a cause. I mean, the Fees Must Falls movement is, is one of the 
I think the standout things that we can look at as a youth and be like, you know what, that really brought us together, that really ignited the fire, everyone had a desire for change and so forth. But I feel like that um, sort of that, that furnace burnt out really quickly because we were supposed to carry on that momentum that we had. Now that we, we can fight for free, free education, what about the issue of jobs? What about the issue of unemployment? Why aren't we having the same sort of resilience towards that? And why are we... Are we, are we, I feel like we laid back now, we, we, we're too relaxed because we're comfortable now, we, we have weed legalized and all these other funny things that are distracting us from the real issues that we really face in this country. So I think we still, like as a youth, we, we still have quite a long way to go, but we need to get there together. Mm -hmm. And I think that only can happen once the people are actually speaking about the issues that we face and the dialogues are actually happening and we need to make start making noise as the youth because People, the, 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 the unemployment rate is shockingly high and mm -hmm. a problem with that is that people even with degrees who are going to these institutes, who are getting this education, are coming out there and the jobs are wanting job experience for you to get hired. You know, where are you going to get job experience if you've just, you've just graduated? You know, people with two degrees but you can't get a job yet at home. So what is the system saying to us then? Even the people that are doing it right are struggling to make a means of living. So I think, yeah, we still have a long way to go as the youth. We still have quite a fight left in us. And I think that it's time that we ignite that fight right now. Yeah. Yep. So even on rainy days, right, workers still wake up in the morning with the motive. What do you think would be the reason for them to wake up every day, even if there's traffic, even if, you know, they know that they're going with uh, trains and buses yeah, like, and they know that it might stop or anything. Like, so, but like they have that motive to go to work. What even do you even think? though it's a mundane job, yeah. like you're just going to clean the streets <coughs> yeah. or whatever. Why? At the end of the day, let's be honest, we all have to make a means of living. We all need um, something that's going to put bread on the table. We all need something that's going to provide us with an income at the end of the month or at the end of the week. Some people aren't privileged enough to have the same opportunities that we have had growing up to be able to go to a tertiary institute, to be able to go get a decent education for you to get um, a proper job and to be able to contribute to the working force. And I think, um, you know, for the people that are doing whatever it is, the scraps jobs that, that we have, you know, cleaning the streets and whatnot, they're really doing their best to make something out of themselves because we don't know what kind of cards they were dealt when they were younger, you know, what kind of families that they came up on. You know, so I think in that broader sense, it's, it's that motivation, it's that desire to live, it's that desire to survive. Because at the end of the day, you can complain as much as you like, but it, we all have to survive at the end of the day, and we all have to make a means of living. So, yeah, I think that's the reason why they get up every day and they do what they do. And then, um, touching back on the youth thing, yeah, you said that they are kind of like laid back and relaxed. Would you think that's because that more or less our like um our predecessors like the people who fought through the struggle mm. do you think it's because after they fought the the more or less their mentality was i don't want my kids to go through it to this not thinking that the child later on in life will be handed things on a silver platter do you think that that's more or less the case as to why they are linked back with the case that you're making that getting handed stuff over in the silver platter I mean, I think you have to break it down in terms of the economical groups that we have. You have to break it down in terms of the racial groups that we have in our country. Our unemployment rate as black people in this country, as Africans in this country, is 64%. White people is 1%. That is a huge, huge, I don't, what scale, that, that like the inequality is just unbelievable. But it also, I feel like, yes, you make a good point with that, right? But more or less, you need to also... I, th I, th I think mm. is it should be also taken into consideration that there is a much larger group of black people in South Africa and that, has, that has come up on a disadvantage <clears throat> because of the system that they were brought up in. Not entirely their fault. But now we have to fix this problem. 25, 27 years is not enough time for history to take place. We need more time as a country. And to be in all fairness, I think we do come quite far away from 1994 to where we are now. The playing field is a bit more leveled out. Uh, and me, myself as a black child, I can go to a university of my choice. I can go get an education. I can go get a job. I can get an opportunity to be in top positions in those jobs 
that that uh, that I mean, because you have black CEOs, you have black owners of businesses and so forth, things that were just dreams in in the, in the past. So we have mm -hmm. that now. So to be in all fairness, we do come a long way from from where we were, but we still have quite a long way to go. And I think that we mustn't get too complacent with what we have now. We mustn't forget that there's still a fight to be fought. Um, would you touching on the twenty seven years out of um, oppression? Mm. Uh, do you think, like more or less, the 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 the, the people of South Africa, let me put it like that, mm. to umbrella everywhere, the people of South Africa are more or less um, impatient as to looking for change, because on on a monthly basis we do see strikes going on, we do see about um, service delivery. Um, mm. Unemployment. Yeah. Do you think I, we are impatient yeah. since it's only 27 years I old? I think that's the energy that's built up in people. Mm -hmm. Over quite some time, you get tired of being told the same narrative. When it's campaign season comes, you get a free t-shirt, you go vote, they go away, nothing happens. Same thing happens every year. I think it's that type of energy, that type of frustration that builds up over a period of time that leads to such actions like public disruptions, strikes and so forth. And I think I do think that people need to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. With the amount of corruption that's happening in this country and no one being having gone to jail for it, I think that's alarming, that's very scary because no one's being held accountable. We're pointing fingers, we're pointing fingers, but no one no really is taking the responsibility and no one's holding anyone accountable for the wrongdoings that's been happening in this country in terms of the state capture report and all these other funny things that have been going on. That. When, when people watch that on the news, you kind of lose hope, you lose spirit as to, are we ever going to get this right? You know, we've had, we've, we've come from oppression, we've gotten power as such, but then we misuse it and we, we, we turn to greed and all these other things. So mm -hmm. I, I, I do feel like those days very fundamental issues that we still have to face as a society, not even as a youth, as, as a society as a whole, there's still a lot that we need to fix and people need to be held accountable where uh, needed. Okay. okay, so what is your opinion whenever the government speaks about the youth employment? Why do you think the partner it, they partner it with being an entrepreneur and not ask the investors they have in the country to help the youth with their employment issue? I think in terms of jobs and the giving opportunities to the youth, that ties in with the whole issue of them wanting job experience before you actually... Um, eligible for, for a lot of jobs in this country and I think it's also because our economy is suffering we do need a lot of help from the outside ex external world um, but yeah I think it, it ties in with the job experience that is needed for, for you to start working to, for you to be, to be able to contribute to the working class okay um, I want to touch on uh, not necessarily youth and unemployment and everything. Do you think in South Africa that uh, race plays a big role? Does, it, does racism still exist? Racism is, is, is still a major, major problem. Um, it's still an issue that is still very sensitive to some people. Um, it's still an issue that's very much debated on. And it's still something that we still deal with today psychologically. I mean, we still... In terms of our education system, we still have a colonized education system. We still need to fix that. A black child cannot be going to school and all, every time they're learning about themselves, they're either a slave or they're either fighting for oppression. You know what I'm saying? We need, to, we need to tell our history the way that we want to tell it, not the way the white people want to tell our narratives. Because that's what happens. They tell our stories, our narratives, and we take that as the truth. Well, mm -hmm. actually, it's not. You know, so I think we need to create an education system that empowers the black child, that liberates the black child, and that actually tells them who they really are. Because that's not happening right now. It's putting us down, and it, it plays with your self-esteem and, and your, your self-worth and who you are. Because when you, you're not confident enough to, con to, to compete with your white counterparts or your Asian counterparts or whatever, because you don't feel like you have the same mindset as them. You don't think that you can, you can achieve what they can achieve. And when, really, that's not the point. So I think we need to decolonize our education system, and we need to start empowering ourselves yeah, through that, because education plays a vital role in any given society. Um, it, I understand what you're saying, right? But I do feel like, yes, it is colonized, which is wrong. I'll put it out there, which is wrong. 
But as the youth, um, there was a survey done by Twitter that uh, the the Twitter people are more educated than more or less like the ordinary person on the road. There's, if I'm not mistaken, a thirty, no, it's a forty something percent that people on Twitter actually have bachelors. And if you look at Twitter, we all know Twitter is to be that um, social media where you can voice what you're saying, and if people pick up on it, it will trend. So don't you think, yes, it is colonized, but it also also plays another role where it wakes up the mind to say, this is wrong, that's right, um, in terms of pretty much anything in life, not necessarily only racism. I don't think it's, it's, too, it's as much as the education system, as much as it is, as it is the internet that does that. Because mm -hmm. the internet gives you a much broader scale to work with. You have your own choice as to what you want to read about, what videos you want to watch on YouTube, what documentaries you want to watch. So the, the schooling content, it, it, it is important and, and whatnot, but the internet has played a major role in, in terms of shape, in terms of how people formulate their opinions, how people shape their perceptions of their own reality, and how people uh, justify the things that happened in the past, depending on what you read about it. But with that being said, you see the problem with the internet is that we, we have quite a digital divide between the haves and the have-nots because most of the people in our country are living under poverty. Data costs are extremely high. I think we play the highest data costs in the whole of Africa. Yes, it is um, true. So that's, still, that's another fight that we should be raising a point on because the internet is a very important tool. It's a very, like, you can learn so much from the internet. You can, you can watch YouTube videos, how to do tutorials and teach yourself how to make films and stuff like that. There's a lot of opportunities that open up once you have access to the internet, you know. But I think we still need to change our education system first before mm -hmm. we get anywhere because that's where the fundamental problem lies. Everybody goes to school. Mm -hmm. Everybody True. goes to school. I can understand the tertiary part, you know, people go out and adventure, but everybody goes to school. That's where you, you, you formulate your, your opinions on your outside world. That's where you learn, you know. So. That I think our education system needs a radical change, like ASAP. Okay, um, if you had to say one thing about more or less what we've been talking about, and yeah, what would you? What is the one thing that you actually want to voice out to the world to say, hey, listen, this is what's going on in South Africa, and yeah, well, basically, what I would like to say is that. We should stop looking to politicians for change and look for it within ourselves, because we've, we've, we've I think we are a generation that's realizing the kind of cycle that we've been trapped in, getting promises, getting promises, getting promises to no avail. So we need to pick up the baton and say, this is what we're fighting for. This is what we want. We won't back down until we get this. Until that, we reach that point. I think things want to stay the way they are because we can have we can be having this dialogue, these conversations and whatnot. But if it doesn't, if the energy doesn't get brought into something like a movement, like a strike or, or whatnot, then we, we pretty much might as well not say anything because that's what the government wants. They want you talking about everything but not doing any actions to fulfill that you know, those goals you have. You know, so I think that we need to take the fight to the to the to the government and we need to make some heavy demands and we need to start holding people accountable for what has been happening in this country.